Welcome ladies and gentlemen to my Magicka Templar DD PvE build. In this video here I will try to explain everything as detailed as possible. If you want the short version of the build I will put a link into the description of the video which will lead you to a 10 to 15 minutes video where I will just explain all the essential stuff. So why do you want this build? First off, it has a maximum damage output, really high DPS. Then, as you see, all my gear is crafted. That means you do not need to farm 500 times a day Maelstrom Arena, White Gold Tower or Prison. Now you might think, oh, he doesn't use double Kina and no Maelstrom weapons, so his damage is not good. But this is not true, our damage is as good if not even better than people that use double Kina and Maelstrom weapons. I will get to that later. So first off I will talk about the character stats, so the, like the race, the potions I use, the food, the Mundus, etc. Then I will talk about the gear, champion points, my skills and then at the end I will talk about trials and dungeons setup. Okay, let's get started with the character stats. So, this build is focusing around spell critical and increased critical damage. When I buff myself, I'm at 2.8k spell damage. This could be a lot higher, okay? But we have 72% crit spell critical. That's a lot. Plus we use twice one star so we get the thief and the shadow and we have a lot of other increased critical damage modifiers. So and as a reminder like you want to have group buffs as much as possible like aggressive warhorn and spell power cure to get the most out of this build. So yes you can do awesome damage on your own but you will do a lot more if you actually have other group members like the healers and the tanks supporting you to increase your damage that is like how it always should be so just the other stats I'm at 17.3k health, 41.5k max magicka I'm at the CP cap so if you're not at the CP cap you will have less resources here. I could have more resu more resources here, stats, because I use seven pieces light, mainly because of the resource management. If you have no resource issues you could go five light, one heavy, one medium to get more max magicka and max health. But again I really like the seven pieces light. Then the buff food I use is simply this one, Solitude Salmon, just a VET15 one that gives you max health and max magicka. The potions I usually use is the spell power potions because they give you spell damage, spell crit and magicka back, which is really nice. We usually use inner light here so you don't really need the spell crit part of the potions but I just usually buy those so I just have them doesn't really matter then the race so there's a few possibilities the most optimal ones would be either a Altmer or a Dunmer but also races like Imperial or Breton are kind of nice so I prefer Altmer because as you see you get 4% increased frost, fire and shock damage, 10% max magicka and 9% increased magicka recovery. A Dunmer for example has 7% increased spell damage for fire effects if I remember correctly. So the difference is really not big between those two. A Dunmer also has 10% increased max magicka and 
then a Donmer has like increased fire resistance instead of the recovery as an Altmer here. That is why I prefer the Altmer. The recovery is just really nice, especially if you're uh, like PvPing and PvEing. That's the thing. So now, just to show you some parses, what DPS you can reach, I will also put the some pictures into the description of the video and probably some some like some videos where I go through dungeons or on some bosses just to show you what DPS you can do. And again, those DPS as you can see here, like those are from more floor cash, the veteran. Second boss like 38k, last boss 36k. I do not always reach those numbers. Those are just the best parses I got. But there is also more possible. Then again, those numbers are not reached alone. You need a lot of group buffs to get those, to get there. So this build is really optimized for trials because the thing is, as we have a lot of spell crit, buffs like aggressive warhorns and other group buffs really boost our damage like really hard so that's the thing that's what most people need to learn that the group buffs are really important even in a four man dungeon a tank and a healer should probably use aggressive warhorns just to boost the damage of the DPSers anyway that should be held off for another video but whatever let's get to the gear so I use five pieces twice born star four pieces Julianos and three pieces willpower there is other possible sets you can use you could use Julianos you could use scathing mage if you have it it's really up to you I just really prefer twice born star because it gives me an extra health bonus and because we use seven pieces divine traits our two mundo stones get buffed so much that's the thing, that's why I think Twice One Star is better than Giuliano's, for example. So again, 5 Twice One Star, 2 Giuliano's Head Shoulder, and then the weapons, 2 Giuliano's Swords, Precise. I have a Magic Damage Enchant here, a Fire Damage Enchant here, and a Poison Enchant here. If you have a Maelstrom, Fire Stuff, you also could use that one if if you prefer that. But I don't have one and I'm not going to bother farming Maelstrom, so whatever. Then, three pieces willpower. If you have access to Moondancer jewelry, you could test it out. I do not think Moondancer is a lot better because the extra stats you get from willpower are really nice. I have spell damage enchantments on all the jewelry. Then arcane traits on all the jewelry if you do not have the money to buy arcane you also could use healthy yes you will lose magicka but you will gain health and you might probably die less especially if you're not so used to run dungeons and you do not run them as often as I do for example and you will still do a lot of damage it, it's not like you're gonna do zero damage if you use two healthy rings, for example. That's the thing. Then another very important thing is I use seven pieces light, mainly because of the resource management. Because of this, reduce the cost, reduces the magical cost of spells by three percent per piece of light armor equipped. So, like most people, run five light, one medium, one heavy but they will lose 6% spell cost reduction, so we have that, and we all know Temple has quite some issues with resource management. So it really helps. If you do not have any resource issues, you can go 5 light, 1 medium, 1 heavy, no problem. Then also, what you can try is, you can use double Kina if you want, if you have the gear, if you don't bother farming the things. But really, like, in 
if you have infused trait on Molokina, yes, you can use it. Most optimal would be divines. That's the thing. But really, everything here is self-crafted, so you don't need to farm any dungeon at all, and you will deal as much DPS as other people with double Kina. That's the thing. Okay. That's it about the gear. So now, let's move on to the champion points so the setup I use maybe it's not the most optimal one but it's just how I have my champion points distributed at this point if I do any drastic changes I will put the note into the video and put the changes also in the description of the video so now let's start with the damage part of the CP system elemental expert I have 92 points here as you see, it like it increases flame, frost, shock, and magic damage by almost 24%. In the previous patch, it only increased flame, frost, and shock damage, and magic damage was here that changed. That is why Templar does so much more damage because we have magic damage, fire damage, magic, magic, fire damage, fire damage, magic damage. There's a lot of magic and elemental damage on Templar, so Senimox combining Elemental Expert with Magic and Elemental Damage really buff Templar, plus Tomaturge changed now to increased dot damage and you see I have 65 points in here so we get almost 90% increased dot damage and this here is a dot, this here is a dot, this is a dot, this is a dot, this is a dot, this is also a dot so we have a lot of dots so like that's why Tampa does so much more damage because of the CP changes it didn't get a lot of direct buffs to the class itself but the CP changes made the class indirectly a lot stronger then I have 10 points in Elfborn so now what you need to know about Elfborn so, as you see, increased damage and healing dealt by spell criticals by 5%. Now, what you need to know is, so, a normal hit is like 100% damage. And if you do a crit, you do 150% damage. And now, those 5% do not, I repeat, they do not buff the 150%. They only buff the critical modifier. In, in our case the 50% so that's why this one is weaker than Elemental Expert or Tomaturge like they they both buff our overall damage and this one only buffs the critical modifier that's the thing that's what you need to know same thing with the Templar passive here it says increases the damage bonus for your critical strikes by 10% and your damage against blah 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 blah. But the 10, it's not an actual 10%, it's only 10% of the critical damage component, so the 50%. Okay, let's continue. I have none. Ah, oh, maybe another f important thing to know, like, we get 12% more spell critical but like we have a lot of points in here anyway so it doesn't matter but for people that don't have a lot of CP make sure to have 30 points in here then nothing here so I have 67 points here most important is just make sure to have six, uh, 30, 30 points in here because of the synergizer passive grants two ultimate anytime you activate a synergy while in combat so every time you activate a synergy you get two ulti then I put all my points into magician because we want to get as much spell cost reduction as possible again if you have less CP just put 30 points in here and put the rest into magician then I have 40 points in quick recovery you don't really need that I just have it here because I have it here now here another tricky part so hardy was changed it reduces now poison disease and physical damage so depending on what 
dungeons you do, you could swap those around. So for example, you see Elemental Defender reducing Flame, Frost, Shock and Magic damage. So if you go into the Trial AA of, or more of Lorkash, or you do wet dungeons that mainly have Elemental or Magic damage in there, you want to buff this as much as possible, right? If you have Trials like Hellra or Sanctum, which are poison and physical damage heavy, you want to have more points into Hardy. Or if you have wet dungeons that have a lot of poison damage, you want to have more points in here. You could just do 50-50, it's up to you, but I usually swap them around, especially if you try to do a very good run. It can save lives. Here I have nothing. Yeah, that's all I did. Again, there might be better options. This is just how I distribute my champion points at this point. Now, let's get to the skills. Now, so here it is like... I will just explain to you why I use those skills and why, like, what could you swap them out with if you want to use other skills. Also, like, this is just the setup I use. Maybe there is better options. Maybe you prefer to assign your skills. Like, maybe you want to have proxy here and spear here. Kind of like those changes, what I'm talking about. Anyway, let's get started. So, first off, on your main damage bar, always make sure to have a Aedric Spear ability, because as we know, the Piercing Spear, while an Aedric Spear ability is slotted, increase the damage bonus for your critical strikes by 10%. So you always want to have one of those here, even if you don't use any of those skills. That's the thing. Then, we all know we have Burning Light. Gives you a 25% chance to cause an extra 5.4k magic damage anytime you hit with an Eidric Spear ability. And we use Punching Sweeps a lot, so like we all know it's a channel, 1.1 seconds, and it has 4 hits, and each of those 4 hits have a chance to proc Burning Light last time I checked. If I'm wrong, maybe it changed in this patch, I haven't tested it in this patch, I will put the note here so you know. Then, now to the skills. So, we all know we have our dual wield bar here. Dual wield buffs our spell damage because we have two weapons, more than our destruction stuff, as you see. So, you really want to make sure to have our AoE abilities on this bar. At least the one you spam. So, how I set up my thing is, all my dots are kind of here on the second bar let me just put this one in here too so I only really reapply dots here and then I swap back to my first bar and I do damage here because I don't want to stay on the destruction stuff bar because it's less spell damage and if proxy explodes while I'm on the dual wheel bar it will also deal more damage now Blazing Spear, this is my main AoE ability, so as soon as there is like 3 plus enemies, I just spam this one all the time. As you see, it has a radius of 8 meters. Impulse, for example, only has a radius of 6 meters. So. And this one also deals more damage because you can have it on your dual wheel bar. You're not bound to a destruction stuff. It is really resource heavy. So when you spam that, make sure you have the, resource, the, the rune focus down. It also has a dot, but we don't really utilize the dot. If there is like a boss fight and there is a lot of trash on that boss fight you can throw this once so like the dot is on the ground and it also hits several other enemies but if there's a lot of trash I, I just I just spam this one anyway so yeah this is really the most tricky part like you need to know when to use like blazing spear when to use reflective scales, scales uh, reflective light and when to use puncturing sweeps about the magical templar, it's really tricky. 
then reflective light this is a dot so as you see it has a quite 28 meter range so this ability it's kind of tricky to use because you can shoot maximum three balls at enemies and you see it deals instant damage flame damage and then it deals damage over time so now usually if the enemies are not lined up re correctly like this like now when I shoot reflective scales it would probably hit both of those towers but if I'm too close to only one side it will only go to this here and it will ignore the second one so you need to get used to when you can use this so you hit as much targets as possible it is really tricky then yeah that's about it it also gives you the major prophecy buff increasing your spell crit but we have in the light here anyway puncturing sweeps this is our main damage skill on single target as you see the nearest enemy takes 140 percent additional damage each strike so this is really nice and also heals you for 35 percent of the damage done so i really prefer this skill because it also heals you for a lot so you're less likely to die that's the thing so you don't really need any defensive buffs and you don't need to worry because you get more healing only because you deal damage and heal yourself at the same time that's why this skill for example in maelstrom arena is really nice because it just heals you for so much it's crazy and of course it deals really nice damage and it can proc the burning light you have to notice it it's a eight meter range so you need to get really the hang out of it like this like this probably it will hit the stone there it would hit the mob you really need to get the hang out of it so those three skills kind of hard to use but once you get used to it it will be easy now Jesus beam most fucking retarded OP skill in the game radiant oppression so what it does is burn an enemy with a ray of holy fire dealing 15k magic damage over 2.8 seconds deals up to 20% additional damage in proportion to your current magicka this was nerfed I think it used to be 40 or 30% now it's only 20% so targets below 50% health take up to 330% additional damage so this scales right now I usually start using the ability at 35% but I will get into the rotation later on after I explained all the skills again with rune focus down we are almost always at max magicka anyway so we really benefit from the extra 20% damage that Jesus beam gives us then in the light and and again as just for an example like I don't have a high spell damage setup right but all the group buffs on a really low health enemy my Jesus beam with aggressive warhorn active and like all the other debuffs on bosses it still can crit for 60k plus that's the thing I mean there is people probably close to reaching 100k with a high spell damage setup that's how broken OP this skill is in the light this is mainly here because it gives us 5% increased max magicka plus the spell crit that's about it shooting star so we use shooting star because it is flame damage and we all know fire damage in trials or in group setup is more beneficial than frost or shock because for example a magic DK has engulfing flames which gives 10% increased fire damage this also works for other classes so we benefit from the 10% fire damage buff so this gets buffed this gets buffed this gets buffed also fire damage has a ch chance to cause explosion this one 
Explosion deals also shit ton of damage. Frost and Shock doesn't have this option. So always make sure to have a fire stuff. Then as you see the Im there is an impact so dealing like almost 18k flame damage and then after impact enemies in the target area take 5.6k flame damage every second for almost 12 seconds. So you want to make sure to shoot this down when the enemy is not moving so he stays in the dot and it really deals a shit ton of damage. Another very important thing to note by activating shooting star you get might of the guild so casting a major skill ability grants you empower increasing the damage of your next attack by 20% within 5 seconds so once you drop shooting star you want to make sure not to use any light attack so just use shooting star and for example reflective light because the initial hit of reflective light gets the 20% extra damage or the initial hit of brazing spear or the proxy that can benefit also from that it is really hard to time so if you don't really care about that because it's not that much damage increase just ignore it now to the second part is our dot bar Blockade of fire, this got buffed so hard this patch, it's also broken OP, like it can crit to up to 10k probably, maybe even more, I'm not sure, it's just fucked up. Then, as you see, burning enemies take 20% more damage from this ability, so just by having a fire stuff you do so much more damage than with a frost and shock stuff, it's fucked up. The reason why you use blockade of fire is because the duration is longer than the unstable wall of elements. Unstable wall has 6 seconds, this blockade of fire morph has 8 seconds, which lines up perfectly with our proxy detonation, which is also 8 seconds. So proxy det, what I usually do is, like, I cast proxy det, then the blockade of fire, I go back to my dual wheel bar. The moment proxy that goes off, I swap back to my second bar, recast proxy, recast blockade, and if I need to I recast this skill or this skill and then I swap back. So I don't really need any dot timers because every time I hear the proxy explosion I just swap back to the second bar, reapply my dots and go back to my first bar. The only really dot timer I need is reflective light because it's like 6.5 seconds but that's a good thing even like if you're on console you don't need a dot timer well you don't have any that's the thing so you just proxy the blockade you swap back you keep DPSing your skills then once it explodes you just swap back recast go back that's that's a good thing that's a cool thing about the magic attempt or about this setup that's why I have the skills aligned like this. Then we have yeah the proxy that I always use it even on single target but it is probably most beneficial when there is multiple enemies and it deals a shit ton of damage believe me. As you see each enemy within the bomb's radius increases the damage by 10% up to a maximum of 100%. So the more enemies the more damage you will do. Channeled focus, so this is our resource management tool number one. So creates a rune of celestial protection which defends you while you stand within it and for up to eight seconds after leaving it. Then you see the last part, or let's say the rune grants major resolve and major reward, increase your physical resistance and spell resist by 5.2k. You also recover 120 magicka every 0 0.5 seconds. And you see it only costs 643 magicka, it's so cheap. Now you drop it down, and you see here like the buff keeps reapplying, right? Once I go out, it doesn't reapply anymore. When I go back in, it goes back up again. So basically you have 8 seconds time to do whatever you want and you still get the recovery buff. That's a thing. So you need to know about this skill. And we use 7 pieces light so we have 
pretty low like spell resistance spell and physical resistance but with rune focus it's at a decent amount that's the cool thing about magic at templar then rearming bear trap i like to call it bear trap i don't know but it's a it's a bear trap so this gives you this is mainly used because it gives you the minor force buff which increases your critical damage by 12 percent it's a lot and we know we have an increased critical damage built so we want to use this if you have somebody in the group that uses twilight remedy which also gives you this buff you don't really need that then again inner light and shooting star shooting star is on both bars because we know that like let me try to find it for every mage skilled ability we get two percent extra recovery and max magica <laughs> so like those two give us four percent increased max magica now for example if you want to go ranged you could use force pulls here if you want but you also just could spam reflective light if you want that's what i will probably do so i don't have to rely on this ability at all you also could use like if the dark flare here but the reason i don't like dark flare is because you cannot move around that fast because it slows you down the moment you cast it that's the that's the issue i have with this skill you can use purifying light i don't like it because it's a dps loss as it cannot crit you, the max damage i can do is 25k that's the thing so now about the rotation it is again it is really hard to to get the proper rotation up but at the moment as i said i just i activate before the fight I make sure they have rune focus down, then I proxy up my blockade. I reapply like the reflective scales dot. If there is several enemies I use blazing spear, if not I go directly into the punching sweep spam. I use my ulti of course if I have it. Once like I reapply reflective light as soon as it run out. So you basically only need to keep track of this dot. And then once the proxy explosion goes off, I go back to my second bar, reapply those two, and then I spam again this. Reapply reflective light when it goes off. Once it explodes, I go back here. And now rune focus and uh, bear trap. So I reapply rune focus every second time I get to this to the to the dot bar and i reapply the bear trap also every second time i get to the dot bar because what you can do with the animation cancelling like uh, weapon swap so as you see when i do the full animation this is the full animation right so now what happens when i do weapon swap it cancels the animation so i press rune focus and then i weapon swap immediately you didn't see the animation but the skill went off it's the thing so i use this this rune focus weapon swap and it activates it goes to the ground same with the bear trap trap swap it goes off so you don't really lose any time activating this skill those skills i just usually like i don't reapply both at the same time so i do this 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 and then I do those things I jab when it explodes I go back proxy blockade bear trap I go back so I kind of swap back and forth between those go back this blockade rune swap so I always swap around with one time focus one time bear trap that's the thing I do. Just make sure to watch some of my videos where I DPS on a boss or in a dungeon so you can kind of get the hang of what rotation I use. Again, there might be a better setup, it's just how I prefer it at the moment. 
so now this was it about the skills I use let's just get the closer look at the passives so about the passives just make to make sure to have all the Templar passives then we use the destruction stuff passives and now very important because we use dual wield you want to have the last passive slotted here or activated because you need you need level 50 but as you see each sword increases your damage done by 2.5 percent so we get five percent increased damage because we use swords it works on all abilities then of course light armor because you use full light armor here you can activate those but you don't really need to you want to have fighter skills as you see nine extra ultimate for killing undead or the Aedra and increases your weapon spell damage by 90% when attacking the Aedra or undead so you really want to have that one and this one too because it also works on werewolves then mage skilled you want to have all all those here you don't need this one this is only for questing this is really nice I will not go into the details but I mean you can read it and voila you don't need any of those but what you want is those we use seven pieces light so we only get the two percent bonus but it's better than nothing and if you use five one one you get six percent same here activating an ally synergy restores four percent of your max health stamina and match magica so we get 1.6k magica back every time we activate the synergy this is a lot that's why you want to activate synergies then here you don't really need anything apart of course the proxy that then again i talk always about aggressive warhorn what is this so you see sound your warhorn to rally your force increase max magicka health and stamina by 10 percent so i get 10 percent increased stats from this skill for 30 seconds that's crazy and now most important things you and your allies also gain major force increasing your critical strike damage by 30 percent for 9.5 seconds that is why you want to have three to four aggressive war horns used by people preferably by healers and tanks in the trials or in dungeons because 30 percent increased critical strike damage is so fucking much that's what many people underestimate this this skill is is fucked up op then of course we have our racial passives here and then make sure to have alchemy medicinal use when using potions resulting effects last 30 percent longer if you don't have that passive your potions will only hold like 35 seconds if you have the passive and you use wet 15 potions you will have the buff for the whole duration till you can use a potion again you also could use like this one if you want more time on your buff food but it doesn't really matter That's... so those are the passives yeah that's about it I don't think I need to get into more detail but yeah so now let's move on to the trial setup and all those kind of stuff you need to know like when you go into a dungeon how to increase your damage etc so about the like the support and how you should set up your group for trials or wet dungeons so always make sure to have like a character of each class in your group because especially in trials because you have passives for example a sorc has a like spell crit passives that gives everybody two or three percent spell crit in your party it doesn't look like a lot but if you put that on 12 people it is quite a dps boost a templar for example has has this illuminate or what however you call it it gives you ma minor sorcery increasing the spell damage by five percent for your whole party that's a lot it's only five percent but if it goes to 12 people or 11 10 people it's a lot of increased spell damage then there is a lot of support sets that should be weared by like healers and tanks 
There is, for example, Spell Power Cure, which increases your spell damage, or the group spell damage. We have Alkosh, which reduces the physical and spell resistance of enemies. We have, for example, Twilight Remedy, which can be wear by a healer. So when you activate the Synergy, then you will get the Minor Force buff, which will increase your critical damage by 12% all those kind of things and like those sets really make a huge difference it's really important to know then for example I said before uh, Magicka DK should always use engulfing flames because the 10% increased fire damage like the whole group benefits from it then again aggressive warhorn this skill is so OP like in a trial environment you need three to four of those aggressive warhorns because yes the 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 resource component it's running for 30 seconds but the increased critical strike damage buff is only running for 9.5 seconds and that is what you want to have so you need three to four to keep those constantly up to get as much damage as possible that's what most people do not understand then using synergies in group dungeons and trials is very important as well that's also one of the other main issues what many guilds do not do first off as you see when you have the undaunted passives every time you activate the synergy then I get 1.6k mag magicka back I get two extra ulti points from the synergizer where is it here and again for example like for resource management necrotic orb this is the unmorphed one I think the morph one is mystic or healing orb one of those one of those like when you activate the orb and it explodes it gives magicka back so the more on trash fights the more enemies the more mag magicka you will get back that is really important that's why those should be spammed in in trash fights from the healers like just throw three four of those orbs into the group and people can activate the synergy so everybody gets everybody gets magicka back the dude that activated the synergy gets ulti back gets more magicka back plus if the healer is wearing twilight remedy he gives he gets like the dude that activates synergy gets the minor force all those kind of things matter it doesn't look like it's a huge damage increase but it is uh, it is a really huge damage increase that's the thing that's what most groups have issues with as of what I know so that was already it I will make sure to upload videos from time to time so you can see how I fight, fight with the Magicka Templar and if I make any drastic changes to the build I will of course do an updated video for this particular build okay if you like the video don't forget to hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe thank you and have a nice day cheers